Simply Southern is produced by the Alabama Farmers Federation and made possible with the support of Alabama Farmers Cooperative. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the Quality Co-op Store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your Quality Co-op Store. There's one near you. What sustains us? Food? Family? Faith? Alabama farmers live those things every day. They conserve our resources, clothe our families, and fill our tables. They cultivate jobs for our communities and values for our future. Farmers grow it all right here in Alabama. Welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Mary Wilson. And I'm Kevin Worthington. It's a new month and temperatures outside continue to be cold, but still there are fresh vegetables and other products available from Alabama farmers. Coming up a little later, we'll answer the question, what's in season? From Roy Rogers to Charlie's Angels, you'll find varying themes of lunchboxes at Columbus, Georgia's Lunchbox Museum. And even more nostalgia awaits inside six other museums, all under the same roof. And I'm Stacy Little. Today in the kitchen, we're putting a dill pickle twist on classic deviled eggs. Y'all stay tuned. Mary, when your fur baby Doug the dog's not feeling well, what do you do? Well, we typically take him to see his veterinarian. But Doug only weighs about 35 pounds. What if the patient is a 1,200 pound cow? Then you need somebody that makes house or pasture calls. But that's becoming increasingly difficult as more and more vet students are opting for a small animal practice. That leaves farmers wondering what to do about the health care of their cows, horses, hogs, and many other animals. He got hurt the other day. Uh, Pepper here is not nearly as excited to see Dr. Man. Christy Standridge as his big brothers I'm Bob and Chief good. seem to be. Good. <laughs> Dr. Christie, as she's known locally, has been treating animals in Northeast Alabama since she started her practice in rural Marshall County about five years ago. I've always wanted to be a rural mixed animal practitioner in Northeast Alabama, but I'm very specifically. But Dr. Christie is different from most vets in that she treats all kinds of animals. Whew. Part of the reason right is that it's harder to treat large animals. So you have to go in, you know, rectally and you can actually feel the baby and fly symptoms and other signs that let you know that, that she's pregnant um, or not pregnant and how far along she is. And so, you know, when you're talking about putting your arm in a 1,200 pound animal and they're thrashing around in the chute, you know, that can kind of get, you know, <laughs> it can get a little bit, a uh, little bit rough on your body after several. Small animals are also more rewarding financially. Good boy. I can spay, you know, four or five animals in an hour or so, hour and a half. Um, and you're talking about $100, $150 a piece, and that's, you know, th that's just here at this rural practice. So you do that versus, you know, most large animal stuff, you're at the most $100 an hour is what you're looking at, you know. So, so yes, it makes a huge difference. Even at a lower rate, most farmers try to protect their profit margins by doing some basic veterinary work themselves. We do try to handle all of the other well kettle stuff we need to do, like our annual vaccinations that we do, our dewormings, our uh, retagging, identification by tattoo, we apply those, all that, yes. We, we do try to limit what we spend on mm -hmm. the as much as possible. Sometimes, however, an animal requires treatment only a vet can provide. And time is often critical, especially if the doctor has to travel a long way. You better have a neighbor who has some skills that can help you with that or you're gonna to have to call one of these people and get them lined up and get them to come to you and that's gonna be an expensive proposition. Dr. Christie acknowledges her practice would be more profitable and a lot less work if she only treated small animals. But she's wanted to do this kind of work since she was a little girl and it's a lifestyle her family loves. My own father has said, 
we gotta get this large animal stuff, you know, gotta dwindle it down because it's just not as profitable um, as a small animal side. But we've sat down and talked to him, my husband and I both, you know, this is a service we provide. You know, we, everybody in this community is family to us. It's not only a career and a lifestyle, it's, it's the service that, that God's called me to do. Mary, 40 years ago, about 40% of all veterinarians were in large animal practices. Today, it's less than 5%. And of graduating veterinary students, only 3 to 4 percent plan to treat large animals. So this is a problem that will likely continue for a long time. Becoming a veterinarian takes a lot of time and money. There are incentives available that encourage students to go into large animal practice by repaying some or all of their student debt. So far, however, they haven't been entirely successful. When Simply Southern continues, enjoy being a kid again. You'll feel like you're back in the school cafeteria with all your friends when we visit the Lunchbox Museum in Columbus, Georgia. Fire insurance is usually part of standard home insurance policies. In the event of a fire, your home insurance will cover the cost of the structure, but you can give your home an extra layer of protection by proactively preventing fire hazards. Inspect and clean your fireplace annually to keep it burning safely. Keep paper products away from stove burners and clean the lint screen of your dryer after every cycle. For questions about your coverage, contact your Alpha agent. These Alpha Insights are proudly presented by Alpha Insurance. Alabama is a state filled with riches, like the juiciest peaches, a summer tomato sandwich, or grandma's pecan pie. But perhaps our greatest treasures are the hands that grow. From generations past through the years to come, Alabama fruit and vegetable growers produce an abundance we all enjoy. Alabama produce. It just tastes better. A farmer has to live on faith. We do all we can do, but we can only control so much. Alabama is the second largest poultry growing state in the nation, so we're trying our best to grow all the corn we can for that. What we produce not only feeds and clothes all of the United States, but about half of what we make goes on to the world market. We've been able to improve yields, have some things that, that can help us produce a better crop. I'm proud of the product we make and proud that I can say I'm an Alabama farmer. When you look around for information and answers to your everyday questions, how do you know who to trust? Alabama Extension takes Auburn and Alabama A&M universities to the people. As educators, we are trusted partners in every county, providing valuable and practical ways to better our homes, farms, health, and communities. Our research extends knowledge and improves lives. Learn more at aces.edu.